Well, welcome to the studio. We're glad to have you always. <laughs> and uh, we thought that we would talk about what to do if something is kind of wearing out. Do you replace it or do you repair it? So we have a couple of things that um, we've either replaced or repaired. <laughs> probably numerous times. <laughs> so I wanna just talk to you first about patterns. So we sometimes will make a pattern that is used numerous times. Like for students who are doing um, the sunshine, uh, this pattern gets used a lot. And so sometimes, as you can see, it gets holes in it from the solder. It gets all, you know, problems with it. And so I'll have David replace it and make a new one. Now this one is starting to get holes in it too. So with these, we have to replace them lots. And you can't really repair a pattern. You just have to make a new one. And that's okay. But that's one thing that we do all the time. And is... sometimes we have patterns that are uh, uh, hand-drawn. Yes. And so we have to, we try really hard, like that one over there. In the, we, You've got that one. That's a hand-drawn one. Yeah, there you go. And so we... Yeah. We've, Flipped it out of the way for when we solder the back side of the window. Mm -hmm. And that way we don't damage the pattern because we're going to have to use that same pattern one more time. So, um, and let me show you what a student is working on back here. So, this window is kind of in between. Um, David did he, doing it on computer-aided drafting and me drawing it. So all these outside ones, we're figuring out what bevels go where. So that's pretty easy because the bevels are already cut. But inside, so about from here to here is what was done on the computer. And then the center part from here to here I drew out, oh, oh, David did some birds too that the client liked. And then the rest, we just kind of drew in. So there's not another pattern and she has to make this twice. So I think that she's just gonna make the same, not switched over. I think she, the same window is gonna go on both sides of the door. So yeah, that, um, sometimes it's just drawn on and so you have to just figure it out. <laughs> Okay, on this little section, um, Jeannie has noticed that on our wizard grinder here, this part is kind of wearing out a little bit, and so when she goes to, sh to cut something, it'll, it'll push the plastic down, and uh, it'll actually uh, go under the cutting surface of the, of the grinding wheel. So... We're going to talk about how you can fix that. Now, for one thing, these uh, these plastic pieces, see that one's broken. You can get new ones. And you put a new one in. Okay, you can see that this one and this one are the same. Look at this one. This one's different. This is for a different kind of bit. It's one that you can tighten up and clip and and put on. And this is for a smaller for a smaller uh, uh, grinder bit. So we're going to take this one and put it in place. And the difficult part is you want to clean this out. I have this special spoon that I use 
for digging out my grinder. Kind of fizz, did you see that? <laughs> Okay, so see, that fits right down in there. Now I will have to put a new sponge piece down. Let's see, here's one. But there we go. That's that repair. If you ever need to repair this part of the table, you can just pull it off, flip it over, put it back down again. Here's what it looks like removed. You see there's a spot for the for the little plastic insert to go. And then on this side, you have the same spot. So you can just keep rotating it over as it wears on you. Okay. Okay, this soldering iron has the word fix on this piece of tape. So that means there's something wrong with it. But what I did was I carefully plugged it in and look, it gets nice and warm. We don't, we try not to use water to clean our tips anymore. We use these, Jeannie showed you how to make them on a different video. So this one wasn't heating up, and the only thing I can say is that I think it must have been plugged, plugged in incorrectly because it's, uh, it's heating up just fine. Okay. Another one. So, so that's that one. So, uh, so we can pretend to have fixed it because it is fixed. All right, so now she says this one has a damaged tip. So I think we'll plug it in and see what kind of results that'll come from. One of the things you want to make sure of is that as you plug it in, that it's actually plugged into both sides correctly. You know, if you plug it in like that, it's not going to heat up because only one side of it's plugged in and so it doesn't uh, complete the electrical circuit. So you have to plug it in properly and I think that's occasionally what happens on these where students think that they their iron wasn't heating up. Okay so on this particular one Jeannie has told me that only the tip works and the reason for that is because there's all this gunk on here so if you take your grosian pliers you'll notice that there's a serrated edge inside on both sides of the plier and you can apply it to the tip and roll your iron back and forth 
and look at that. It starts to, it's almost like you're using a file on the tip. And so then you can also go back and forth on it and get it to clean up. This is nice and hot, so it's working well. See how it kind of gets shinier there, where I... Put that in the... Students will often think their iron doesn't work because they don't know how to they don't know how clean the tip should be. And if you've got a dirty tip, very often the heat won't conduct through to the solder. Now I may take a Solomonic Moniac block to it. Now this is a part where you want to have good ventilation. You'll see that as we uh, as we clean using the Solomaniac block, it raises up quite a, a lot of smoke. This wouldn't be good to breathe. You use a little bit of, just a little bit of solder. When working with the Solomaniac block, See how it's nice and it's getting nice and clean on this side. Over here, it's still pretty dingy. Several of the big stained glass suppliers sell sell these. They don't often come with instructions. So now let's see, I'm going to if this was one of those irons that's easier to change the tip, I would. But anyhow, there you go. That's that's how good I'm going to get it. One hundred. This Studio Pro Studio One Hundred, and you see the main difference of this. First of all, they cost more than these, and but second of all, look at this. You just unscrew this knurled nut here. It comes off. Look at that. Now this baby is nice because first of all you can't put it in too far because that that little part stops it from going in too far. See that? On these choice ones, they'll drop right down and short out your iron. So you gotta be careful that you don't 
replace those tips when it's plugged in. And look at that. Well, thanks for being with us to figure out if you'd rather replace or repair. And uh, if you have some ideas too, like if you, you think, oh, I have this certain thing, a stained glass, and I don't know if I should replace it or repair it, just mention it in the comments and we'll see if we can um, figure that out and let you know. Anything to help you to become better stained glass artists and to have so much fun doing it because we know we do. <laughs> Thanks for being with us.